Hello and welcome. I'm Chris with iBailey Technology Consulting and in this video I'm going to walk you through setting up NetSuite to allow REST API connections and some of what you can do with that once you have enabled those integration options. So we're going to break it down into stages, how to set it up, how to authorize a request, and then how to make requests. And this is focused primarily on, like step one is focused on NetSuite administrators for how to set it up. Uh, step two is a bit of both the NetSuite owners, whether that's an administrator, whether that's an account holder within NetSuite, um, but also a little bit on the developers who will be creating the integration piece. And then three is focused solely on the people who are integrating, so who's making the request of NetSuite. So the first thing to do is set up NetSuite to allow REST integration. So from our NetSuite environment, you're going to go to Setup, and this is as an administrator. Setup, Company, Enable Features. Under the Suite Clouds section of the ribbon, we're going to scroll down and find Suite Talk Web Services. We're going to select REST Web Services. And then under Manage Authentication, we're going to make sure OAuth 2.0 is checked. Then we are going to create a record for this. If they call it integration record or integration application. And this is a, a record so that when the developer contacts NetSuite to request information, there is a place that it can be logged, where it can be controlled, where it can be authorized from. So you might want to have a different one of these for different integration partners. Let's say you have one service provider who is accessing your general ledger for tax or audit reasons. They might have one integration record. And then you have another one, which is for like integrating Salesforce CRM data with NetSuite, and that might have a different integration record. So in this case, we're going to just call this the video demo. It's going to be enabled. We're going to describe it because that's always a good policy. We don't need token-based authentication, so we're going to turn that off so it doesn't create validation errors if for not having things filled in properly. OAuth 2.0, which is how we're using it. We're going to make sure we have authorization code grant and REST web services. And we're going to give it a redirect URI. For the purpose of the demo, we're using localhost, which is just means my computer. It, if you type it in, it means your computer. Now, you should be told what to put into this by whoever you are integrating with because they will know what you need. If it's going to be a thing where they manually do it because they're building you a custom one-off product and they just need to get the tokens to get started, they'll, they might use localhost. Uh, but if this is like a website that is going to, that has a button that says click here, they should have somewhere on that website a statement or the people you're talking to should have told you, hey, when you set up the integration record, this is what you need the redirect URI to be. Because if it doesn't match here with what we're going to send it later, it will give an error and say, hey, that's, that's not okay. So we're going to save. We now have an integration record. And we, I'm going to pause the video in just a second to copy these down. These are only shown when you create the record, the client ID and the client secret. Uh, they're essentially a username and password for this integration record. So this integration record, because I'm showing you these, will be deleted after this video for security reasons. Okay, so now that we've gathered those pieces of information, I do want to note that whoever is going to authorize the integration partner to access NetSuite uh, needs to have the right permissions. Normally, anybody with an admin or developer permissions has what they need. So now we're going to talk about the authentication flow. This gets a little bit less picture friendly. So we're going to use a tool called Postman for this uh, because NetSuite actually has some support for Postman once you've turned on REST APIs. Uh, so I'm going to break this down and we're sort of going to go through this bit by bit. Postman is a free tool. You can go and download it, and it just lets you make HTTP requests manually and, or inspect the results. So it's, it's the tool we're using for this demo. The first thing that needs to happen is we need to 
construct the, the link that someone has to click in order to begin the authorization process. So we have the ID of our NetSuite instance. So anytime you're in NetSuite, if you look up, uh, at, uh, like that should be at the front of the address bar. So that instance app.netsuite.com slash app slash login slash OAuth2 slash authorize.nl. And then we're going to give it query parameters. Now, certain things are default. Response type, code. That just has to be what that is. Redirect URL, this is the value we gave it earlier. Uh, except note that colon is percent sign three capital A and followed by, and then the, the two slashes are percent sign two capital F, percent sign two capital F. Uh, that's just because if we enter them as slashes and colons up here, it results in an invalid web address. Scope, because we're doing REST web, web services, is REST web services. State, uh, the NetSuite documentation talks about this, but basically you just need a sufficiently long string of characters that you can compare your request to the response as a security precaution to make sure there haven't been any man in the middle attacks. Now the last thing we need for this is the client ID that we copied out earlier. That was the consumer key slash client ID value. So I'm going to copy and paste this in and I'm going to click send. Now in this case, it, it looks like not much happened, but I have a status 200 okay here, which tells me that I, I did it correctly. And if I preview the results down here, the login screen, which is what I want. So now I'm going to copy this into a web browser so that a NetSuite user can log in and authorize my application. So we're going to go to a new window. We're going to go there. And it's going to say, hey, your, your session's timed out. Please log in. It's going to ask for email address and password. And once you have gone in and logged in, it will give you a screen like this, where it says, hey, an application is requesting permission to access your account, name the account, as the email address associated with the account, which is why I'm doing it this way, the name of the application, ours is video demo, what it wants authorization for, well, this was a, pre a reauthorization. Now, a thing to note here is the continue option that says, yes, I want to authorize this is the grayed out option. The stop option is the blue option. This is because NetSuite wants us to fail in a safe way. If you are not paying enough attention to what's on the screen, it wants the oops, I accidentally clicked the wrong thing option to be stop rather than go. So you will have to go through and do that and then in just a second, I will rejoin you and show you what happens afterward, after you've authorized it. Okay, so I have, for our demo account, for our demo app, I've gone and authorized it, and you can see it's gone to localhost. The site can't be reached because I'm giving it a very strange URL as a result. Uh, so we're gonna look at this. So you have the state, which is what, in this case, should and does match the state we've passed it, the role of the account, the company number, but the thing we care about right now is this code value over here. So I'm going to copy this value down, and when I go back to Postman, that is the value I will insert as a code, say, in this next request, to say, yes, I am authorized to get the token. In, I authorized it. So there's a couple things, like that's step one. Now, that was a Git request. This is going to be a post request. So we have, in this case, the NetSuite instance name .sweettalk.api.netsuite.com slash services slash rest slash auth slash oauth2 slash v1 slash token. The authorization schema for this request needs to be basic auth. We're going to use the username as username and password. We are going to use the values we copied down 
from the client ID and client secret when we created the integration record. So we're going to copy that in and copy that in. Show password. Make sure I haven't added any extra spaces anywhere. With the body, we're going to enter the code which, that we received, indicating that we're authorized. Redirect URI still has to be the same. Grant type needs to be authorization code. And the body needs to be encoded as a XWWW form URL encoded. And then we are going to hit send, invalid grant. All right, so looks like what happened was we had some extra white space somewhere that I wasn't seeing. So the correct format is still the code you get as the response, the redirect URI with colons and slashes as part of the body, authorization code, URL encoded, with the username and password of the client ID client secret we got earlier, and you should get a response like this. Now, this entire process in Postman, or not the entire process, but once you have the code back from the NetSuite owner, this can all be done by the developer. I now have an access token and a refresh token that I will save because they are useful. Now, if you're not familiar with these, the access token is what authorizes me to make a request now. But you'll note it has an expire then property, and that's an hour. So in one hour, I will have to exchange the refresh token for a new access token. So to do that, I'm going to take the, we're going to go to, we're going to make another post request in Postman to refresh the token. NetSuite ID dot sweet talk dot API dot NetSuite dot com slash services slash rest slash auth slash OAuth2 slash V1 slash token again. Our base we're going to use basic authorization with the client ID and client secret here. Headers, content type, application, X, WWW, form URL encoded. Grant type refresh token. And then we put in the refresh token we copied earlier. We click send and we get a new access token with a new expiration date. Let's take this access token. And we're going to use a minor change on one of the test qu uh, requests that NetSuite has posted. Uh, if you have OAuth 2 and REST permissions set up on your account, there is a Postman collection NetSuite makes available for download that includes a number of queries and a number of requests you can make. So in this case, we are making a request to the NetSuite ID .suite -talk .api .netsuite com slash services slash rest, we are issuing a query slash v1, so services slash rest slash query slash v1 slash sweet ql question mark limit equals five, because that's the parameter. We're limiting ourselves to five responses here for speed. Our authorization type is bearer token, and that's where we're going to put the access token. Headers are in this case, not that important, nothing we need to tinker with. Our body of the request, we're going to make it raw. It's a JSON. And the JSON is an opening curly brace and a closing curly brace. And between them, we have a key of double quotes, Q, double quotes, colon. And then we're going to issue a select statement to the database behind NetSuite. And this is where the power comes in. Previously, in order to issue a statement like this, you either had to have very well-developed like SOAP capabilities to write this as an XML document, or you had to pay for the ODBC connector and install that in your integration partner. Now, without any software installation on my integration partner, I can issue queries 
to the NetSuite database and say, show me this information. So in this case, the query is we're selecting customer email addresses, customer company names, and transaction IDs and transaction dates from customers joined to transactions where the transactions entity is the customer's ID and the transaction is a sales order. So we're getting sales orders for each customer And we're just saying, hey, I want to see the email and the company name for the company and the document and date of the sales order. And we're limiting it to five because that's, you know, that's all official documents. And what do we get? We get an indication of where the next set of results in this would be because we limited five. We have the next set of five, where the last set of results are, and what this set of results is. And this is all useful for integration partners to work, paste through the results. Count, there are five results. There has more, it's true, there are more results. And then we see I mean, relevant links, but also here's the company, the date, the document, and the email, which is exactly what we asked for here. Company, customer company name, email, customer email, document, transaction as the transaction ID, and the date, transaction date. And we have five of these. Offset zero total results 238. And that's, so that says if you had to go through all of this until you were out of results, there would be 238 results. And so this is where the power of the REST API comes in because now this is now just available to a developer. I created the refresh token and the authorization token, so now the developer can just manage those tokens without having to come back to the NetSuite user to get reauthorization and without having to install dedicated drivers and set up uh, extra add-ons to your NetSuite account beyond what you can do in the web interface. So this has been a tutorial on how to set up NetSuite's OAuth 2 enabled REST API connections in NetSuite itself, as well as how to, to generate authorization credentials for an integration partner to use those, and then how to issue a basic query against the REST API. There is robust documentation for this that NetSuite has provided. They have a REST, uh, REST API schema browser. They have robust health topics. Uh, so I encourage you all to dive in, take a look, and unleash some new possibilities. This, I've been Chris with iBelly Technology Consulting, and I hope you all have a great day.